This is Brent with Likens Motorsports. It is day three of 289 build. Today, uh, the goal is to get, there's a cricket loose in the shop somewhere and it's killing me. Can you hear it? Oh my goodness. All right, uh, so the goal is to get push rods. Uh, these are trend push rods, Pro Motley. Uh, push rods in are Comp, Ultra Gold, Rocker Arms. Uh, they come with poly locks. We're gonna get our valve train on, and the goal is to, before um, I put the oil in and prime, so this is kind of like a chess game. You got to think out your strategy. Um, before the intake goes on, you need to prime the oil pump and make sure that oil goes everywhere that's supposed to, that the lifters are doing what they're supposed to do so that you don't run into any issues and have to uh, pull intake gaskets back off later on and all that stuff. Um, so before we put the oil in, I want to go ahead and lay some paint down because I know that when the oil pan is full of oil, I can't really tilt the engine up to get to the bottom of the pan. So push rods are going to go in, rocker arms are going to go on, that way uh, it'll keep my lifters from doing things that they shouldn't be doing. I guess they can't really go anywhere though on a short deck block, but I'm uh, going to go ahead and get that in. And then we're going to lay some black, satin black down and um, just kind of eat away at that um, today. Probably get the balancer coated with paint and get the water pump on and get it painted. Um, and then when the oil's in and the filter is on and all that stuff and primed, then we can put the intake on and I can overlay another shot of paint over top of that. That cricket is killing me. But um, yeah, the reason I probably won't get to the, the pump priming today because I, I'm gonna run some 5W30 oil in this engine and I'm all out. I just checked. Um, I just have 1030, so oil will be here tomorrow, and then we can get that done. So let's go ahead and get uh, push rods in. I just washed those, and we'll get those all lubricated up. I use some uh, CMD pressure lube on valve tips and on the ends of the push rods, and um, this is going to be monotonous and boring, so I won't uh, film it, but... You roll the engine over, um, use the Evo method, and set your rocker on preload. I'm going for zero turns plus a half a turn of preload for this. And uh, if that proves to be sufficient on the dyno, then we'll leave it alone. Uh, I think it will be. But let's get these rocker arms, push rods and rocker arms on. All right, so I'm going to walk you through uh, just a couple of things that uh, is, is helpful to know. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to point out is that uh, when you set your guide plates up, you want to make sure that um, you try to get the, the rocker arm centered on the valve stem as much as you can. But if you are in a spot and you pull the valve cover and you see that it's not perfectly centered, it's okay because the push rod has clearance inside that guide plate slot. So it's going to allow movement. So sometimes you, you may see, you know, the rocker going to one side. Sometimes you may see it go to the other side. It's perfectly normal. You just want an overall general lined up with the valve stem. <laughs> And on some of your aftermarket heads, like your AFRs and everything, they will tell you that due to the guide plate and rocker arm setups and the way that the heads are made, sometimes that the rocker arm will maybe hug 
one side of the valve stem instead of perfectly centered. So you don't have to be really anal about those sort of things. Um, another thing is when you run all your valves, you should look down and you see that your lock, uh, your set screw and your poly lock, they all should be pretty much at the same spot um, inside each poly lock nut. Um, if you have one that's way up or one that's way down in comparison to all the others, then you need to stop and, and double check what you're doing. Um, if you notice the fulcrum, there's a flat spot on it. That is where your poly lock sits. There's a, a counter, kind of like a counter bore for it. On the other side, it's rounded. So if you were to pop your rocker arm on like this, then your poly lock is going to sit way high and you're going to see a, a discrepancy between that and the other one. So you want all of your uh, fulcrums oriented that way. I'm going to walk you through how to do one. Uh, this is number six. This is exhaust. So to set the exhaust, you roll the engine over until the intake valve is starting to close. You see by the angle up. So we're looking at this push rod. I know the camera's gonna be shaky. Okay, so valve is opening and starting to close. You can see the lifter starting to go down. So we're gonna put our rocker arm on, verify that it's for the most part, centered on the stem. I like to set my preload like this so I can pick the push rod up and I can move that rocker arm up and down, okay? Some guys will tell you to spin the push rod to know if you're at uh, zero lash. That's not always a a uh, accurate and I'll show you why here in a second. <laughs> but uh, I'll move that push rod up and down axially and screw that poly lock down until I'm not able to move it up and down anymore. That is zero lash. Then I'm gonna go half a turn. And sometimes your lifter manufacturers will give you a, a different spec than half a turn. So, so that one is, for instance, that one is correctly set, but look, I can spin the push rod. But I know that that lifter has preload because I can look down in there and see it. And let's drop the ratchets on the floor. So, just a quick overview of, of setting up the rocker arms. All right, so all of our rocker arms are on. Um, I'm going to throw some old junky valve covers on here. I've got my exhaust ports blocked and my spark plug holes blocked and some other things. And we're going to lay down some black on this thing. If that's not a beauty, I don't know what is. I still feel bad, but this gives me joy to see paint. It doesn't look like Ford Industrial Gray anymore, and it doesn't look like Pontiac Silver. So, uh, Mr. Norrie's going to be running an electric water pump, so I bought a new block-off plate and put a brushed finish on it, used some factory fasteners to put that on there. Norrie, if you don't like the looks of it, it's easy to pop off and, and refinish it. Um, factory water pump, uh, I didn't know this, but they are aluminum. Uh, when I went to pick it up out of the box, I expected it to be cast iron. And when I grabbed it, I about slung it out in the yard because it was so light. Um, so the paint settles just a little bit differently. You can tell the difference between cast iron and aluminum. It looks more satiny on this. <laughs> but, uh, looks great in my opinion. I'm not a body man, but, uh. It doesn't look too bad. So, a couple of things. Uh, Mr. Nori, I know you're listening. My AMK bolt kit did not come with generator 
bracket or generator bolts. I don't know if you're able to scavenge eBay for me and see if you can find some OEM bolts for that, but I'm gonna need them. And I'm gonna need some OEM water pump pulley bolts as well. The ones that come with the kit are meant to hold the water pump pulley as well as the fan blade. So they're, you know, about yay long. So these are, uh, let's see, quarter 28. They are uh, fine thread on Fords. Or hold on a minute, they may be 5 sixteenths 24. I'll check into that. I think they're 5 sixteenths. Um, but yeah, that's where we are. So oil will be here tomorrow. Um, hopefully I can get it filled up and get the pump primed and make sure we got a nice little uh, trickle from our rocker arms and got good oil pressure. And then if that's the case, then uh, I can put my intake manifold gaskets on and the intake and it'll start looking like a complete engine. I ordered a fine temp white paint marker um, so I can mark my balancer marks. Um, obviously 12 degrees on the balancer ain't going to cut it. So we're going to have to space that out and give ourselves room to set the timing. Uh, have a factory oil pressure sending unit extension. The sending unit pops up like this. Got our Wix filter. We're looking good. Looks a whole lot better like this than it does that gray. All right, guys, day three. We've got a, probably another full day at least uh, to get this engine done. Uh, probably a little bit longer than that. I always uh, snag somewhere. Um, kind of like this uh, generator bolts. So I'm gonna have to come up with something like to, to run that. But um, we are well on our way. All right, guys, thanks for sticking with me for another day. Hope you're doing well. And I hope you're having a good week. If you haven't uh, subscribed yet, please do so so that you don't miss out on uh, the dyno results for this 289 motor or the 302 tunnel port that's coming up right behind it. And uh, a ton of FE stuff. So it seems like they come in, in waves, like a bunch of small blocks come through, then a bunch of FEs, then a bunch of small blocks and a bunch of FEs. So that's, that's fine though. Um, oh, hold on a second. Let me uh, put you on pause for a second. I'll show you the valve covers that we have for this engine. All right, so these are uh, factory repops for this year of 289. I'm not gonna have any issue at all with this passenger side because it's got a narrow baffle that will sit in between the rocker arms. This one's gonna give me a fit. Um, because it's got that flat baffle, but it's really deep. So I may be tempted to give it some persuasion. And in combination with a, a thick valve cover gasket, uh, we'll, we'll get there, but uh, we'll leave that for another day. I need to go and rest. Hope you guys are doing good. Yeah, I'll let you later. Okay, just a quick follow up. I couldn't go too far without seeing if I could get these to work. I don't think I'm gonna have any problems with them. Um, the baffle stuck down quite a bit and I was able to, to close that up a hair and um, they're not 100% perfect yet, but I don't have any qualms about making them fit. So Nori, rest assured, we will uh, we'll get these to work. All right, I'm gone for good this time.